Hello and welcome to our national election debate. The subject of this debate this time is foreign policy. The subject is phrased like this. And this is the debate that's being put to the floor of the House. After 10 years of the UPA government, UPA 1 and 2, foreign policy in this country needs a complete overhaul. That's what we'll be debating on. And taking positions on that debate, we have four uh, very esteemed panelists. Thank you very much. Let's have a round of applause for them. Thank you very much. And as I introduce them, I'd, I'd like to start with my extreme left. To our extreme left is Mr. Manish Tiwari. You have seen him on television, one of the most vocal members and spokespersons of the Congress party. Manish Tiwari is a member of parliament of the Indian National Congress in the Lok Sabha and assumed charge as the Union Minister of State Independent Charge of Information and Broadcasting in October 2012. He's one of the youngest ministers in this cabinet. Uh, he became national president of the NSUI, the student swing of the Congress party in 1989. He was subsequently president of the Indian Youth Congress in 1998. He served as a national spokesperson of the AICC starting 2008, elected to the Lok Sabha in 2009, and now Minister for Information and Broadcasting in the Union Cabinet. Manish Tiwari, round of applause for him, please. Thank you. It's good to see you, Manish. I Thank look you, forward Arnav. to a good Thank debate. You. One thing Thank I'd you. say about Manish, he's Minister for Information and Broadcasting, but his core competence, besides, of course, what he does, is also in foreign policy. Uh, to Manish Tiwari's right, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Mirza Mehbu Beg. Dr. Mirza Mehbu Beg is part of the Jammu and Kashmir National Conference and was elected to the Lok Sabha in 2009 from the Anantanag constituency and was member of various standing committees since 2009. He was member JNK Legislative Assembly for two terms and member of the JNK Legislative Council between March and May 2009. He was the National Conference Provincial President for the period 2003-2009 as part of our effort to include a variety of political parties across this great nation of ours in the national political debate. He represents the NC tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. Beg. It's Thank you. Round of Thank applause you, for Dr. Mirza Mehboob Beg, one of the most experienced legislators this country has. Thank you, It's so a pleasure much. to have you, sir. Thank you, sir. A and to my, to my right, since the focus of these national election debates is also to have people participating in the debate whose core competency is in the subject. Pawan Verma is a very interesting mix. He's a diplomat, author, turned politician. He resigned as India's ambassador to Bhutan to join the Janta Dal United in October 2012. He's a 1976 batch IFS officer and presently serves as one of the senior advisors to the Bihar Chief Minister, very senior politician Nitish Kumar. In the past, he has held several key responsibilities, which includes being part of India's permanent mission to the United Nations in New York. He's been spokesperson for the Ministry of External Affairs and also been press secretaries to Presidents R. Venkat Raman and Shankar Dayal Sharma. Pawan Varma, I cannot think of someone more appropriate than you to take part in our foreign policy debate today. Round of applause <laughs> for him, please. And, and completing this very distinguished panel on foreign policy today is Hardeep Singh Puri. Hardeep Singh Puri served in the Indian Foreign Service for more than 38 years before joining the Bharatiya Janata Party in January this year. He's now one of the prominent voices of the BJP on foreign policy. He served as an undersecretary in the Ministry of External Affairs in the 1980s. He's held various ambassadorial level assignments in London and Brasilia and served as permanent representative of India to the United Nations in Geneva and in New York. He has led India's delegation to the Security Council in the years 2011 and 2012, now opting for a career in politics and representing the BJP point of view, Hardeep Singh Puri. Thank you for joining the debate. What a wonderful and distinguished panel we are in the company of today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say two things about the national election debate. The broad rules are simply this, and please pay full attention. The views expressed on this debate are the views of the political parties you represent. They are not your individual positions, since all the representatives on this debate have either been authorized or appointed by the parties to represent them. Secondly, each of the members on the panel is made aware of the other panelists so that they have prepared themselves accordingly for the positions to be taken. We have attempted at times now to have plurality and balance in points of view that are integral to the debate. Now, the subject of debate after 10 years of UPA, India's foreign policy needs a total overhaul. Before we begin, let's, let me very briefly tell you the ground rules. Each panelist gets to submit his stand. We'll start from the left and then carry on to the right. Two to two and a half minutes. After two minutes, there'll be the first buzzer which goes off. The buzzer will go off every 30 seconds after that. 
till the speaker does not stop. Uh, and uh, we'll have a first show of hands right at the start of the debate to give you an idea of how the audience thinks about it. Your challenge, gentlemen, is to win over this audience and get them to your side. After uh, the, each speaker, two interjections or three interjections will be allowed sharp questions to the speaker concerned. After the first round of initial positions and interjections, I will ask four questions, one each to each of the panelists, on which I want a pointed reply from them. My questions will be aimed at trying to help the audience decide whether they should vote for your political party in this election based upon your position on foreign policy. Then we are going for open debate, and finally, we'll have the audience vote once again. I'd like to start today by introducing, perhaps on the back foot, a little bit on the defensive on this subject, Manish Tiwari representing the Congress party. Manish, your time starts now. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> if you look at uh, India's foreign policy over the past 10 years, there are uh, two things which stand out. The first is that the objective of every foreign policy is the pre preservation, protection, and promotion of national interest. And the second objective is the consolidation of strategic autonomy. Now, national interest gets preserved by deepening the space for consolidation. We've had 10 years of economic and social consolidation in this country. And I will just give you two numbers which substantiate the extent to which the UPS foreign policy has helped with this consolidation. If you look at the foreign direct investment numbers, from 1999 to 2004, the total inflow of foreign direct investment into India was 19.5 billion US dollars. From 2004 to 2014, as we speak, that number has gone up to $175 billion. The second number I would like to give you are the export numbers. In 2003, 2004, there were two point, India exported worth 2.93 lakh crores. In 2013, 2014, that figure has gone up to 16.34 lakh crores. The short point I'm trying to make is that because we have been able to engage the world effectively, we've been able to give space to our country to economically consolidate itself. The second thing that is required is that when you go in for a period of consolidation is to achieve uh, a peaceful periphery. And over the past 10 years, the UPA government has not only succeeded in having a peaceful periphery, but also had, uh, has consolidated the concept of strategic autonomy, which allows India to operate independently as we move from nation-centric frameworks to issue-centric frameworks. As the bell has gone off, I will recess my argument and hand over to the next speaker and come back to you later. Well, I'm sure before you hand over to your next speaker, you will have some interjections. And i also like to say one thing. We already see two hands go up on this side. Gentlemen on the panel and to the audience, there are two ways a speaker can be interrupted, though I must say it is very politically incorrect for me to actually suggest you ways to interrupt a speaker. The first, of course, at the end of what he says. The second, if you feel that the speaker is making a factually incorrect point, you can just say fact check. You raise your hand, you say fact check, and the speaker has to concede. The uh, first interjection coming to you from Hardeep, Hardeep Puri of the BJP. Manish, Manish, you have chosen to spend a lot of government money to put out half-truths. And one of those half-truths you reported in your statement today, you said our exports during the last nine years have gone up from 2.93 lakh crores to 16.34 lakh crores. Manish, if you had done your homework, you would have known that whilst our exports went up by those figures, our imports went up even more, and that the trade deficit has gone from $17 billion in 2004 to $200 billion today. $192.5 billion. Oh, yes. Now, if you want to ch chant that as a success, then I'm afraid you're on very weak grounds here. A, I don't think you should be spending government money okay, okay. Taking, taking out ads, and B, you should get your facts right. Well, I, accused I, of I, fabrication I, at the I, very I, start, I Manish Tiwari. May I come back on that? Yes. I'm uh, very happy that uh, Mr. Hardeep Puri has chosen to you know, deflect from the issue of foreign policy into economic and commercial policy. First of all, Mr. Puri, we are not putting out half-truths. The figures on export are absolutely correct. 
And if India is exporting more, and if India is importing more, this means that we are globalizing. And if we are globalizing, this means that our foreign policy, in terms of its ability to be able to engage the world both ways, has in fact gone up. So therefore, if you were trying to repudiate my argument, I'm afraid you've ended up substantiating it. Well, I, I only find it. We have other interjections coming on from this side. I'm not going to allow a counter. But, but I'm very surprised, Manish Tiwari, as an observation. People say... UPA has been pusillanimous when it comes to China, confused when it comes to Sri Lanka, unsure when it comes to Maldives, uh, you know, <coughs> ambiguous when it comes to Bangladesh, subservient those when it comes to America. Are, those are points, those are 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just surprised that those are your points, but I'm, aren't you surprised? I, am, I just make an observation. Well, uh, that, that money is to call it strategic autonomy. That money is to call it strategic autonomy. You know, you put extremely uh, provocative adjectives in front of every proposition. <laughs> so we'll deal with the adjective and the proposition. Okay, separately. second question to Manish Tiwari. Who is it coming from? Uh, Pawan Varma concedes. No, no, Are we, you in we, league we, with the Congress we, Party alliance, already? Alliance, we, alliance. We, alliance. We formed an alliance already with it. You know, we have to raise questions that we wish to raise and not necessarily respond to what Any is. questions? No, no, no questions no, no, at this no, point. No, no Manish Tiwari, I'm quite surprised. You're being let off. No, on, on the well, substance of what he said. Uh, there are it, questions to be asked, but not on the substance of his opening statement. Not on the substance of his opening statement. Our next speaker, representing the National Conference, Dr. Mirza Mehboobbeg, your two minutes starts now, and the subject is this. After 10 years of the UPA, which you have been a distinguished member of, India's foreign policy needs an overhaul. Dr. Beg. Uh, not exactly overhaul, Arnab. But yes, it is a continuous process and we have to learn. We have to learn and make amends where necessary. I don't think there is any problem in that. When I say that, I honestly feel being a part of UPA, which we are and hopefully will continue to be, uh, when it comes to dealing with China and when it comes to dealing with Pakistan, I think we had incursions in Jammu and Kashmir, that's Ladakh part of Jammu and Kashmir. <coughs> yes. And one of the objections China raised against us was, why are you building roads on your side? You stop doing that. Yes. Not only that, not only that. We have an issue with Pakistan, but Pakistan never ever dared to tell us that since you belong to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, you are a Kashmiri, so we'll give you stapled visa to visit Pakistan. China did that. China did that, and when we deal with China, there we see underreaction. We see as if we are ducking. And when it comes to Pakistan, my BJP friend will bear me out because dealing with Pakistan has religious undertones, and it suits BJP because they are in habit of what they call majority community appeasement, which is more dangerous than minority community appeasement. And uh, they, they, there is hyster hysteria is created all over. Hysteria. If it's Pakistan, we are up in arms. I don't, if it's on merit, there is no problem. Yes, we can be up, on, uh, up in arms against Pakistan. But same thing we don't see, especially from BJP, because when we talk about Congress and BJP, these are important, two important All India parties. Yes, we have entered into coalition era. Yes, we have to consider the aspirations, the emotions of regional parties. But if regional parties dominate and uh, uh, even make us to change our foreign policies, I am afraid that's not good so far as the national interest is concerned. Dr. Beg, thank you very much. Dr. Beg, which side are you on? His own, his own. No, uh, UPA or NDA? No, no, there is no question of UPA or NDA. I am with the MP UPA, we will continue to be with the UPA, but wherever we feel, because uh, let me be very no, honest. It's okay. So I meant as, that in jest. No, so far as the state of Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, we have huge state, no, stakes I, uh, so far as our relationship uh, okay, with Okay, we have concerned. counters coming in. Uh, May I? Manish Tiwari has a counter. Any counters no, from this I, side I as well? Okay, a, Manish Tiwari. I just have a point of clarification. I was just trying to understand as to whether I'd heard what Dr. Beg said correctly. He said that uh, regional parties should not have a veto on foreign policy issues. Yes. And if coming from the national conference, you know, that is their position, 
I think that's a position which needs to be applied. I think because I will answer the, that. Well, because, well, because, because of this, what's your question, no, sir? No, I'm not, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted a clarification to understand whether I had heard him correctly. And if he says that is his position, I think that's a position which needs to be applied. Yeah, well, but certainly as, a, as a representing a government which has consistently given into regional parties, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Manish well, Tiwari. in the sense, I, it's I, not a question, question of giving. Question, question, question. No, well, 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 well question, uh, Arnab, question, I think you're being, you're, 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 you're being I, judgmental yes. because of the simple reason that there is one thing called sensitivity and there's another thing called a concession. The UPA has been sensitive to regional aspirations within India. It and has not conceded. Uh, 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 now, 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 Mr. 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 Uh, Mr. Tiwari, uh, sec, first interjection. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, no, no, no. That's I, didn't want to, I did not want to interject Dr. Big uh, during the flow of his presentation. Uh, but let me just point out to him that uh, foreign policy issues, especially those in relation to Pakistan and China, are not dealt with on religious uh, basis. And should you believe that, I think you might want to look, look at these things once over again. And the second point I want to make is that, look, when it comes to foreign policy formulation, the central players, that is the parties in power at the center, the opposition, and the regional parties have to try to, have to, try to look at issues, not in terms of their own narrow regional parochial interests, but in terms of the law, la, larger national good. That's what national interest is about. And I, I'm sure that Dr. Big is on board on that uh, plane. You want to correct, right? He, yeah. he is saying to you, basically, don't give a communal spin to national, to, to foreign policy. Do you want to retract what you just said, Mr. Big? No. What I said was, I was very clear. What I said was, as Mr. Manish Tiwari said, we have issues with Pakistan. And Jammu and Kashmir has huge stakes in our relationship with Pakistan. That's what I'm saying. Because uh, once our relationship with Pakistan deteriorates, it has directly adverse effect on the state of Jammu and Kashmir and on our well-being. That's what I said. I didn't say, I, I, didn't, I didn't say. What I meant was, uh, what I meant was, uh, so when said, Mr. Manish Tiwari said, we, uh, we were no, you are not answering his question. Which my answer, you're, you're my not, question is very answering. basic. You have to deal with the Western neighbor. This is a given to you geographically. Yep. We all have to learn to look at the issue in terms of an overall national interest. And therefore, regional parties have to realize that the national interest subsumes a narrow regional interest. Okay. That's exactly that. what I'm saying. Well, well, well I, then we agree. Uh, uh, that's then we exactly agree. what I'm saying. I'll move on. I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, only, I'll only say this to you, sir, <laughs> that you prefer dialogue <laughs> with... <laughs> you, you prefer dialogue with Pakistan. So which side are you on, sir? Uh, he's on the side. <laughs> normally, normally I am, of Dawood I am Ibrahim. The but, you. <laughs> normally of Dawood Ibrahim. But no. It's amazing. Sir, you say you prefer dialogue with Pakistan despite Sarabji being brutally killed in a Pakistani prison. You 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 you, you, watch, you, you say you say dialogue with Pakistan despite the shoddy pace of the 2611 trial. What, you say dialogue with Pakistan despite the anti-India resolution passed by the Pakistan Parliament in August 2013, despite the beheading of our soldiers in January 2013, despite 196 ceasefire violations in 2013 allowed and 93 in 2012. You want talks with Pakistan, sir? I mean, beyond the point of time, the question will be put to you, sir. Are you looking at national interest? But I'll come to that no, later. No, no. Our next you speaker. Asked me. Our next, you, I have asked you, you something. Asked yes, me I have. Questions. So I, I have every right to answer those questions. You have raised some I thought very you'd important agree with issues. Me. No, uh, uh, you have raised some important issues. Uh, no, I, I agree. There is no question about that. There are no two opinions on that. But what I say, we had had three full-fledged wars with Pakistan and many mini wars. Yeah. But even then, we have to talk. There is no substitute okay. to talks. There I is no substitute to uninterrupted, uninterruptible talks. Even after war, we have to sit on table okay. and we have to sort right. it out. Right. Uh, our next speaker today is Pawan Varma of the JDU. Pawan Varma, your two minutes start now. Basically, the three points I want to raise with the, with the UPA. The first is I think the UPA has not succeeded in forging a carefully thought out, calibrated foreign policy and uh, security doctrine. And therefore, our reactions are either reactive or ad hoc. Let me explain this by, by this what I mean. There are two countries on our neighborhood, China and Pakistan. China has followed a policy of containment with engagement. And successfully so, China proposes India response. In the case of Pakistan, it's a policy 
of explosive aggression or tactical appeasement. We respond in an ad hoc manner without an overall holistic framework with anticipation, clarity and planning to subserve long-term policy goals. The question was raised about Chinese stapled visas for people from Arunachal. Our response should have been that we will ask for stapled visas for all Chinese of Tibetan origin. We could have said it. The question was, China protested about India exploring oil in the South China Sea. We should have raised what China is doing in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Pakistan occupied Kashmir is disputed territory. The South China Sea is not. We don't come out with responses. In the case of Pakistan, sir, there are cases, first of all, 26-11, the attack on Mumbai. We said we will not have substantive engagement with Pakistan until the perpetrators whose culpability was beyond doubt will be brought to book. Subsequently, we rescinded from that stand. In the case of Pakistan at Sharm el Sheikh, we conceded that India is culpable in the insurgency in Balochistan just to appease Pakistan. In the 2006 Havana summit, we said Pakistan is also a victim of terrorism when Pakistan is the chief sponsor of terrorism against India. So I want to say that that is the first point. The second is that there is a fragment fragmentation of foreign policy making where ground is ceded away from the center because of proper coordination with your allies. It's not as if regional parties don't have a point of view, but there is a political platform on which to meet and engage them in advance and understand what their point of view is. Therefore, we lost the opportunity when Prime Minister Manmohan Singh went to Bangladesh and we lost, I think, face in terms of the international community when we, we supported the, the resolution in the UNHCR against Sri Lanka. We need to be able to have a proper political dialogue. And the last point, 10 seconds only, I think there's also been an institutional devaluation of the Foreign Office itself yeah, under yeah, the yeah, UPA. Yeah. For four years, Manish, and I want you all to understand this also, we had a very good man as Foreign Minister, but who was neither fond of the subject nor inclined to learn it. And he reads a Portuguese text abroad without knowing it's not Indian. I think, I think there was a leadership drift and the Foreign, pol foreign Office has suffered because of it. May I uh, quickly interject uh, to what uh, Mr. Pavan Varma had said? You know, essentially, you've raised two points, one with regard to China and the other with regard to Pakistan. So the lack of a security... Well, in the sense, uh, therefore, I'll connect the two and try and see as to how do I put the construct of a security doctrine onto it. The first thing that we must realize, and I say this with utmost responsibility, is that we seem to have, unfortunately, both a China phobia and at times a China obsession. The reason I say that is that if you look at China de horse India, China is a lonely power. China has only two friends on its periphery. One is DPR Korea, who's not friendly with anybody in the world, and the other is Pakistan. And in the case of Pakistan, you know, they are prepared to fight to the last Pakistani, but they are not prepared to support Pakistan beyond the point. So therefore, with regard to China, yes, there are difficulties on the border, but you need to engage and you need to simultaneously put your point of view across effectively, May which I, I think, which I think the UPA has succeeded in doing. We are collaborating with China. What's your question? In South what's Sudan, what's we are collaborating with China 16, on Angola, on oil exploration, of talks. but, but no, no, what, on borders, we your... have not conceded. The, the short so point your... I'm trying to make uh, is that, 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 you see, in foreign policy, and you understand that, Mr. Varma, more than I do, you have to engage at the same time, hold firm, in... even with Pakistan. Now, you see, uh, well, you're uh, right. Uh, on 2008, so there may, and may not that, have been is progress. That, is that the there reason? may not have been progress no, to, to our anticipation. No, that, is, but may I say I, I with utmost responsibility that we have succeeded Mr. Minister, in ensuring come to that there's question. never a repeat of Mumbai. Mr. Minister, Six yes, years yes, after Mumbai, Mr. Minister, there's never Mr. been a repeat of that kind of a Mr. Minister, Minister, come to your question. Come to your question. Not because of the engagement. It is because of a robust security doctrine. We're allowing a rebut. May I come back? Who says there is anything wrong with engagement? 2,000 years ago, Chanakya, who wrote the first political treatise on foreign policy and statecraft, said, Samadama Dandabhet, reconciliation, inducement, deterrent action, and subversion. 
Use all your instruments, but part of a holistic, calibrated doctrine and security approach to foreign policy. Which is not in an ad hoc manner. Which is, which is precisely what has been done in the last 10 years. <laughs> which is, is precisely, uh, Mr. Varma, what has been done. Because you mean, have a situation whereby you've not conceded an inch to China sir, insofar as your uh, border is concerned. 18 kilometers. 18 kilometers. Well, 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 I come in on that. Fact check. Fact check from my side. Mr. Minister, you say not conceded an inch. There were at least five major intrusions by China into Indian territory in 2013, sometimes as deep as 19.2 kilometers. And your foreign minister said, this is like acne, which on, can on be which, which can be acne or acne on beautiful skin, which that. can be addressed by applying an ointment. Yeah. I don't know what kind of foreign Expert policy that is. Uh, you must go. You, want, you, want, you, want, you want to reconsider you, what you said, Mr. Minister. Since you raised it, allow yeah. me to respond. You see, there is a perception line that we have insofar as the Chinese border is concerned. And there's a perception line which the Chinese have. At times, they do come up to their perception line, but always, always to be pushed back. So there was a last incident in Dexan took place. They were yeah. actually yeah. pushed yeah. back yeah. to yeah. I, I think, 15 I, I, I think so Therefore, you know, that's why I'm saying that we need to be dispassionate in sir, our dealings sir. with both Pakistan and China and you not see, allow rhetoric see. to dominate the... the, 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 the one, one, let me pay a compliment. One good thing about several ministers in this government is that they have a great English vocabulary. <laughs> Well, not as good as well, not as good. And that that, in, that that includes the uh, that includes our present foreign minister yeah. as well as our honourable minister for information yeah. and broadcasting. The present foreign minister says yeah, fluency without yeah, grammar yes, he, and without Yes, he, he says something. <laughs> Well, uh, that's something I think uh, we ended up imbibing from the, from the honorable members of the Indian Foreign Service. Yes, absolutely. Uh, who, who, right. till yesterday, yeah, absolutely. who till yesterday okay. were representing our government and yeah. now have done a U turn completely not you know, a, a month All after right. retirement. You're so representing the Republic, so, 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 the Constitution, so, so, not a political so, party. So, 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 therefore, that's yeah. the credibility of our Am honorable I members I, of the Indian One second, gentlemen. One second. Manish Tiwari. Manish Tiwari. Manish Tiwari. You're a lawyer. You're now a politician. He's been a diplomat. He's a politician. I, I won't say that you've yeah. given up. You've been a traitor to the legal profession yeah. or he to be diplomatic. I'm not saying that he's uh, a what, traitor. All what, I'm saying is what I'm that saying he was is, very ably Minister, let him come in. the union of India, the government of India, the policies of the now, United Progressive Alliance yeah. for 10 years. Uh, I'd say this. Arnab, now after retirement, he's decided to take Arnab, another position. One minute. One, one minute. Gentlemen, gentlemen, no, no, one second. No, no. We, we, must give, we must give the gentleman under attack an opportunity. No, I'm under <laughs> the, 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 the gentleman under attack I am, today. I am, I am under no attack. I started my life as a lecturer in a Delhi University uh, college. I joined the private sector. I served the foreign service for 39, not 38 years, and I enjoyed every minute of it. And and after retirement. I chose to join the political Politics. space and I joined that party which is strongly anchored in nationalism Ardeep and which is very Singh good on Puri. national security. I, I give you your BJP. two minutes. I could not Your have... two minutes, your two minutes. You know, you, you've also mastered one of the great things of being a politician. You, you take away more time than yeah. you are required. Ardeep Singh Puri, your two minutes. No, yeah. he hasn't had his opening remark. I haven't had my on opening the subject. remark, whereas on... you had your conclusion also. <laughs> opening, <laughs> remarks, uh, opening remarks from Ardeep Puri Starting on the now. subject. Starting now, no. UPA, after 10 years of UPA, India needs an overhaul of its foreign policy, Ardeep Puri. Your Arnab, two minutes start Thank now. you very much for focusing on issues related to national security and foreign policy in the run-up to the elections. Uh, Mr. Manish Tiwari said that 10 years have helped in st strengthening national interest and uh, consolidation of strategic autonomy. This is like motherhood and apple pie. It can mean anything and everything to everyone. Uh, he says that we are obsessed by uh, China and we also have a phobia. Let me just focus on two of the major requirements in terms of foreign policy and how the UPA 1 and 2 dealt with them. In the year 2008, our embassy in Kabul was attacked. Several hundred people were killed. Uh, no response from our side. Then thereafter, we went ahead. Uh, instead of focusing on the uh, place where all the vipers which produce terrorism uh, are focused, we went and agreed that we were uh, also, they were also victims of terrorism uh, by equating the two. Then in Sharm el Sheikh, we uh, committed a self goal on Baluchistan. And throughout, one after the other, we were attacked. Mumbai, 
uh, and we took the position no talks unless the perpetrators of the attacks are brought to justice. But again, very soon thereafter, the Prime Minister's desire to visit Pakistan takes over. Uh, then the um, uh, talks begin and only to end up with some uh, further terrorist attacks. On China, uh, it's not a phobia or an obsession. China is a reality. China is today one of the biggest foreign policy challenges we've got. We've had 16 rounds of border discussions with them. We are nowhere closer to a resolution of the border issue to say that the border is not demarcated and therefore uh, the Chinese come in but they go back. They stayed for a full three weeks in the uh, Ladakh um, uh, area. But more than that, isn't the Chinese reaction in a sense due to the fact that we are beginning to modernize the infrastructure on our side of the border? And have we had a serious discussion with China on how they propose, how we propose to proceed ahead? And I just want to conclude by saying one thing, that at the end of the day, you need a more robust foreign policy of the kind that you had in the five years of the BJP. You need a more focused attention on national security. And more than that, stop this confusion and hesitation, because it ends up not with strategic hesitation, but with strategic confusion. Well, thank, thank you, Hardeep Puri. Your first may question. I, I first counter, may two I counters. Quickly, first I, counter I, from I Manish quickly. Tiwari. You know, uh, Mr. Hardeep Puri, you know, very rightly, since he's recently joined the Bharatiya Janata Party, said that the party is rooted in nationalism. I want to ask him, is it nationalist on the part of the NDA government to escort terrorists to Kandhar and uh, release terrorists uh, who had uh, murdered innocent citizens of our country? Let me then ask you, is it nationalist that after the parliament attack of 2001, you launch Operation Parakaram, you mobilize the entire Indian army, you have it on the border for eight months, and then you withdraw like a mouse, blunting the instrument of coercive diplomacy that we have. And number three, all the follies of Indian foreign policy that you pointed out, may I very respectfully submit, Mr. Hardeep Puri, you were a senior policy uh, member of the establishment who was equally responsible in formulating all those policies which now you are trying to condemn as fiascos. And on Balochistan also, you know, since uh, Mr. Varma, you had raised that point, is it not a fact that the Pakistani state is committing atrocities in Balochistan? So therefore, if Balochistan would have come on the discussion table, all that what is happening in Balochistan, including the killing of Bukti, including the killing of thousands of innocents by uh, uh, Pakistani security forces, that would have been aired in the light of the day. That would have been to India's advantage rather than to India's disadvantage. Well, so therefore, I think a very, uh, a, a very paranoid view question. of uh, or a very insecure view of your own okay. uh, One uh, foreign second. policy. That's a long question. I think, uh, Question. That's, I a think, I think, uh, that's a long question. That's a that's a long question. But he's raised three points. Yes. He raises Kandahar, right? Then he raises your U-turn Operation Parakram. You yeah. will not disagree. Yeah. He and raises the raise question of Baluchistan. Yes. He also attacks you personally, saying, say, he attacks you personally, saying you were on the other side till a few months back, Mr. Hardeep Puri. As a man of conviction, show your conviction tonight. Do you want to concede to the minister? I will not Do you want to concede I will, I will to the take minister him on each of those points? Only because of your only because of your political ambition. Only because of your political ambition. Arnab, you are not changing the position. Let, Arnab, let, me, let, let him start, count. Let, let him count to the minister. Saying, let me start. Arnab, Arnab, before let, he, before no, he, let me. Before he, Arnab, one sec. What? We'll take more count. One second. I'll come to you, and I'll come to you. Before one interjection at a time. One point. So one at a time. Before he responds. Uh, let me tell Mr. Manish Tiwari that terrorists were grateful to them. They had one of the best biryanis in the world when they were taken. <laughs> Very good. Hardi Puri. No, 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 no. We, your question after that. I'll come to your question. Hardi Puri, respond, please. In the 10 years of the UPA 1 and 2, which start in 2004 and end up in 2014 soon, I was India's ambassador and permanent representative to the UN in Geneva. I was ambassador to Brazil, I was secretary of economic relations, and then ambassador in PR to the UN in New York. In none of these assignments was I called upon to formulate policy or to provide inputs for foreign policy formulation mm. on either or China or Pakistan. 
So please, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Manish Shandwari, I, I'm quite I mean, surprised no, 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 please, permanent please. representative the, 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 of the United with Nations the UN. is now feigning ignorance I, 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 that no. he was not involved on the issue. No, I was not involved in the issue. There cannot be something more. Mr. Tiwari, watch it. Mr. Tiwari, since this, say, Mr. Tiwari, are you are are you 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 using this point only for the purposes of debate to put your esteemed colleague on the other side of the back? What is the substantial point you make? All I'm saying is All I'm saying is that Mr. Puri, since he's recently joined the Bharatiya Janata Party, you know, possibly is not acquainted with the many U-turns which the BJP oh, well, has I, done on important let, let questions of national security. Let so therefore, let, let so therefore, so he's well acquainted. Yeah, well acquainted, and therefore, oh, I well want acquainted to come, come, come and answer so you. That's well, you your, your, your you concern, know, Mr. your concern is dripping in sarcasm. Mr. Mr. You may Mr. respond. Mr. Tiwari knows less about foreign policy machinery and functioning than he knows about foreign policy. Let me explain oh. how. The permanent representative of India to the UN okay, let's, let's deals with from, India's let's representation. And if I provided advice on China and Pakistan, I still respect the Official Secrets Act. And I'm not going okay. to tell you how I advise a bond. And I don't want to embarrass now you Now let's public. go to the substantive so, points the of Kandahar, on the Parakram and Baluchistan. On, on Baluchistan. On Baluchistan, short points if, on each. On Baluchistan, the short point is: if you wanted to embarrass Pakistan, you should have raised atrocities being committed by Pakistan in Baluchistan in the Human Rights uh, uh, Commission in Geneva or in Council, or in the Third Committee in New York. But when you bring Baluchistan into a bilateral uh, 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 bilateral uh, agreement in Sharm el-Sheikh, or a bilateral statement, then as Pavan says, you are opening the door on culpability yourself. So Mr. Tiwari, you've got this one completely wrong. What stopped you, Mr. Puri, from raising it in the Third uh, we, Committee we, of the we, United Nations? No, no, You were on, India's permanent on, representative on, on. in the United that, Nations. That the instructions what stopped are sent you from raising on. it in the Third Committee? Oh, if you think Pakistan has How? committed atrocities in Balochistan, you should have advised but, the but, government but of India. But your Prime Minister, so your Prime Minister was your, busy, your, your busy in, in, in getting India's involvement Mr. Nirupam Sen acknowledged in a bilateral take, statement. Uh, you used to so, take stances yeah, yeah. at times autonomously. Yeah. Okay. Questions on Kandahar and Parakram remain. Answer to each of those. Look, in so, far, in so, far, in so far as raising the military ante is concerned, in so far as increasing the pressure, for a long time after that, you were spared of the kind of action which came after the UPA government came in, you lifted POTA and you took a much more uh, open and accommodative stand on terrorism. Mr. Adipuri, so, when did pa Kalchuk happen? Kalchuk happened while Parakaram was on. So therefore, no, if on, your coercive diplomacy no, was I'm, working, I'm what, then Kalchuk would not have you, happened. So therefore, you, please do not try to justify something which is I'm, indefensible. I'm neither trying in to fact, justify fact, it, I'm just trying fact, to remind you what of the facts. NDA government did was something which is unpardonable. Uh, yeah. That yeah. your one instrument of coercive diplomacy, your entire armed establishment, you reduced the it question to is a this sorry this spectacle. Come on, come on. Mr. Puri, now the yeah. third point, I, I've come to that. I remind you, Mr. Mr. Puri, remember the facts. In the BJP government, Vajpayee said, our par ki larai. Yeah. Hmm. Our par ki larai was said by, by Vajpayee. And then later he said to search for peace is no crime. By the end of 2003, there was a change of position. There anyway, was a change of position. You are avoiding. You are to you are, are, are you to R nahi hoye, but BJP par ho gaye. Nahi nahi. Are you are you avoiding the question on Kandahar, sir? I'm You're not, not at responding. All, yet. I thought he would come up with something more innovative, something new. Well, there, was, sense, there was, there was, there was. I, I thought he would come say, up with something new. I need to come out with something more innovative, some more terrorist that you may have released, no, no, that we have, which you may know under no, the no. Official Secrets Act, which I'm not aware of. Hold well, 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 well. You don't answer about Kandahar very clear. Kandahar is something that we want to put behind us, number one. Number two, whatever be may Why have been the Why do you want to put it assessment. behind you? Is it an embarrassing thing? For well, I didn't say that. It, at that point of time, there were some uh, 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 persons who needed to be escorted. Somebody took the decision. But come on, how long Somebody are you going to be hurt? Somebody took the decision. Yeah. BJP Prime government yeah. 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 took the decision. Well, no, 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 no. What's BJP what? government took the decision of releasing them. Dr. Farooq Abdullah was in chair. He resisted. He said, please take your time. The take question, the question, uh, uh, the, uh, que take your the time. question, Don't the question, do the question, he had warned the, them. The question, in put spite of the fact that he warned them, he was in chair. BJP went ahead and did, and we are paying for that. The we are not paying because of that. We, we are, are paying, paying because of the fact that. that later on you are the, continuing uh, to the, uh, show accommodation to. Uh, uh, and, 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 sir, and, and sir, 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 s
the famous bus ride to Lahore, which was followed by Kargil. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, it was a folly yeah. after folly. Yeah. Also, and yeah. then Agra happened, yeah. where Mr. Musharraf was invited, you know, notwithstanding Kargil, to come and walk all over the Indian establishment. First, so that is their record of foreign policy. Time, yeah. First time, hardcore terrorists were released, and we are still paying for that. I don't understand why having biryani in Agra where would have actually helped biryani? fighting terrorism. No, uh, biryani, Mr. Mr. Salman Khurshid had biryani with the visiting foreign minister in Ajmer. That is what I remember. I don't remember what I'll was served you, in Agra. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what was served in Agra. I'll tell you what was yeah. served in Agra. Yeah. You allowed General Pravez Musharraf to walk all over the Indian oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, is yes, what yes, was yes, served yes, in Agra. Yes. Are you conceding today, Mr. Hardeep Puri, that you have a foreign policy that has not been consistent? Last no, Lahore, of... Lahore was followed by Kargil. Kargil was... was followed by Agra. Yes. Agra was followed by the attack on our parliament. Yes. Right? And that has uh, been that, followed then, by then, several then, meetings of no, Prime no, Ministers no, in New York. No, no, that, that was, no, no, that so was, that was, that, that was, elsewhere. that was followed by Operation Parakram. Yeah. Operation Parakram by October 2002 had no outcome. A year later, the government entered into a ceasefire agreement with Pakistan. Why did you enter into a ceasefire agreement with Pakistan? Why were that you showing, ceasefire the, is held. why that were you, why were held. you showing extreme patience with Pakistan no, then? No, that ceasefire Why were you showing extreme patience with Pakistan? Pakistan, then Mr. Puri, answer me. Uh, let me answer, answer you, me. If you, if you will allow yes, me. Yes, please. The ceasefire has by and large held in the last nine or well, ten sure, years, sir, number one. You gave them a long rope then. But the ceasefire is still holding. You but gave now, them a long you, rope you then. You should January not. January 2004 Islamabad composite de uh, dialogue what? declaration. You gave so them a long rope then, also, then, sir. You, but you, have to, you have to. Now, do you, do you think by reopening talks after 9-11, you, you, uh, you get any uh, advantage? Till, till they bring the whole... Terror machine under control. There is no point talking. Whatever may have been the lessons of the past, today we have to learn and, and, that no and, purpose is going to be served by talking to them. Okay, we are allowing a counter, second counter coming to you from here. I don't understand where having biryani in Agra where would have biryani, actually helped biryani? fighting terrorism. No, uh, biryani, uh, Mr. Mr. Salman Khurshid had biryani with the visiting foreign minister in Ajmer. That is what I remember. I don't remember what was served in Agra. Well, well, I'll I was tell you what was served in Agra. I'll tell you what was yeah. served in Agra. Yeah. You allowed General Pravez Musharraf to walk all over the Indian oh, yeah. establishment. Yeah, 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 that yes, is what yes, was yes, served yes, in Agra. Yes, yes. Well, 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 well. Well, we see today. We see today out here. And that's the, that's the uh, thing about uh, the uh, national uh, election uh, debate. Uh, we are seeing a fiery attack from the UPA on the BJP today. I'm sure he's going to get back in equal measure because his record too, Mr. Tiwari. <laughs> Despite his, yeah, despite Mr. his. Mr. Goswami, if you, you know, uh, if, you, if, if you, you keep playing anchor and stop playing their advocate, I think we'll have a balanced <laughs> debate. <laughs> no. uh, counter I, coming I, from Pawan Varma to the I BJP. I have a question yeah. to raise with both my good friend Hardeep and with Manish. Yes, no, with and, Hardeep. And I'll tell you with him, but he must listen carefully. I would request you. You see, foreign policy is not a matter only of partisan politics. India is in the world's most troubled neighborhood. We have 4,000 kilometers of disputed line of actual control with China. 778 kilometers disputed line of actual control with Pakistan. 15,000 kilometers of boundaries with seven countries. And 7,500 kilometers of a coastline. There is endemic terrorism, there is internal instability, there is homegrown terrorism, there is externally sponsored terrorism. In this scenario, can we merely be happy by calling each other the kettle pot, calling the pot black? And I say this in the no, specific, what's your question in the specific, in the, in the specific context, sir, you, in, the, the, in the specific context, in the specific question, sir. Yeah, directly to him. Because two points were raised, but now just to illustrate this, you know, the most shameful episode in our foreign policy was our lack of anticipation of Kargil and subsequently the manner in which we handled it. Foreign troops entered the country. I'm not saying this name calling BJP or Congress, but BJP happened to be in government. Foreign troops enter your country, you are not aware. They occupy vantage points. They, you know that to evacuate them, you lose 1,000 of your officers and soldiers. And after that dastardly act, you invite Mr. Parvez Musharraf to Agra, 
put him in the most expensive suite to have a talk with him. Which self-respecting country does that? Now, what is the question? So the question is that when you say that our foreign policy in the last 10 years has been particularly lacking focus, which I agree with, we must look on a longer range period to see where we have been falling short in this country on devising, devising a foreign policy doctrine. Uh, Mr. Mr. Well, uh, for the one, one, for, for, for nine out of for nine moment. out of yeah, those ten years, no, no, one, for, for nine out of those ten years, you were with the BJP. Yeah. May I, may, may I come in for a moment? So, no, am I right? Well, no. we'll come to that. Am I right? See, see, see. See, now you, you say, don't make it no, political. Mr. No, I said, Arnab, Arnab, one second. Don't Arnab, one second. No, 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 let may me, I come in for a moment? Sir, are you I giving just, covering fire no, to no, the city? No, he asked me. He asked me a question. To, I'll just, I, I'll just allow me. And before you see, no, I haven't asked. I only observation. No, even the observation merits a reply. Although normally I would have ignored. No, but you can. You have your question to him. He's still waiting for the question. The questions I have asked. He hasn't grasped it. Let him answer. Let him answer. Let him answer. If I may. Hey, let him respond. 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 Let him and continues to engage pakistan while at the same point in time sir, continues who, to put pressure so sir, so, so, sir, so therefore Sam so therefore so therefore so therefore don't be taken for a ride right. the, 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 the point which mr hardeep puri was making the point point which mr hardeep puri was making that the prime minister was absolutely okay, wrong in engaging they, they, with okay. pakistan no, no, no. that why, is what's wrong no no nothing wrong we engaged but we never gave ground you engaged but you gave ground no come on be serious hold on be serious there is nothing wrong Engaging with Pakistan. Uh, what's your uh, question? Answer him. No, please. I'm answering both of them in one go. <laughs> well, look, there is nothing wrong in engaging with Pakistan. In fact, my position is slightly more nuanced. In fact, you have no option but to engage okay. Pakistan. Pakistan is your western neighbour. It is a state which is under siege. It is a state, a state which may be imploding. All the more reason you have to talk to Pakistan. But that issue is not to talk to Pakistan at the summit level. After the attack on, in, on Mumbai, 9/11, uh, you had no option but to put pressure on Pakistan to rein in the terror machine. Instead of doing that, every few months we want to raise the level of discussion to the level of the prime minister. Again, I see a report which says the prime minister wants to visit Pakistan in March. He can go there for sentimental reasons to visit his village before he uh, demits office. A point I'm making is different. When you deal with Pakistan, deal with them at the professional level. If in the past we have dealt with them at summit level and we've been betrayed, Kargil, Agra, we should, we should learn from those lessons and not repeat the same mistakes again. That is the Mr. benefit Puri, that history uh, teaches Puri, us. That's the point. Number two, Puri, I, 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 I entirely Puri, I, agree I, that I, we should Puri, not play partisan politics Mr. with Pakistan. Puri, but actually, please, what are we witnessing now? In the few months ago when the Prime Minister was going to DC, there was this great desire by the Prime Minister and all those formulating foreign policy, including Mr. Manish Tiwari, that he must have a meeting with his counterpart. What happened? Of course, he went ahead with the meeting in spite of advice from all others to the contrary. And of course, the Vice President of the party had changed the narrative meanwhile. And the, par and the discussion didn't. Is it worth your while having a meeting which is purely pro forma? My advice to dealing with Pakistan is leave them in no doubt that if they do not rein in the terror machine and if we keep getting subjected to attacks by Pakistan-based terrorists, we will have nothing to do with them on substantive dialogue. The, Stop going uh, back to Musharraf uh, and other Mr. 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 Let the NCA. Let the NCA. Let me draw the distinction. Your time is up. Your time is up. Let me draw the distinction. The distinction is. We, you engaged with Pakistan, the NDA engaged with Pakistan. We are discussing Pakistan. the UPS no, 10 no, years here. I'm, 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 I'm coming to that. We can have a discussion NDA on the, on the NDA's five years. NDA engaged with Pakistan and conceded. Soon, soon we engaged with Pakistan and did not NDA. concede. Uh, uh, That's uh, the difference. Uh, yeah. Let you, me come in you forward. You conceded every time you engaged with Pakistan. Another counter. Come on, we are talking about the last 10 years. taking the next counter. Vajpayee and Mr. Pravez Musharraf doing. The next counter. The next sort of kind of exchanging pleasantries if they were not engaging with each other. Well, 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 I don't know. 
I don't know when there was the beheading of our soldiers <coughs> in January 2013. Yeah, what is and your position no, no, on beheading? What is your position on soldiers one, getting beheaded? Arnab, just a second. Arnab, you had allowed me. Arnab, you had allowed me. I think you should bring it up and I'll answer it. Okay, we have a counter to you coming this way, please. Arnab, that's a problem with BJP. When they are in opposition, they take one stand. And when they are in government, the stand is just reverse to that. Just reverse. Believe you me. But you're with them we when they're in Kargil power. We had Kargil attack. When they're in we government, you're with them. We had parliament attack. And despite that, and rightly so, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee continued. He never stopped negotiations with Pakistan, and rightly so. And we, people living in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, had the best possible effects of good relationship with Pakistan, as I said earlier. So uh, when uh, UPA does the same thing, it becomes a problem because they are in opposition. That's the problem. So now, question they are Mr. going Puri? to an extent of even disowning Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee because he continued negotiations with Pakistan. Was, was and he was, was quite right in doing anyone? that. Mr. Mr. Uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee right is our tallest leader. We wish him a very it? speedy reverend. But where is the question of don't 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 uh, say uh, come up with formulation? No, and no, then no. I am not coming up with formulation yeah. because yeah. despite yeah. a yeah. parliament yeah. attack, Mr. despite Kar Kargil attack, he went on. Mr. He never Mr. stopped yes, negotiations because he's a, man, he's a man of peace. Now you are and he he him. Him. But in learn action. from what, yes. what happened in our time. They have disowned him in action, maybe not in thought. You know, so therefore, you know, thank you for declaring. I join you in wishing him a speedy recovery, but I wish you had respected his legacy. Well, I, I, I will now ask the audience, I will ask the audience at this stage of the debate, and how many minutes are we into the, we're halfway through the debate, and I'm asking the audience that the, the subject is this. After 10 years of UPA, India's foreign policy needs an overhaul, which means if you agree with the Absolutely. subject, you are yes. against yes. the UPA's foreign policy record. No, that's the wrong how, way of putting it. Well, let, let me, I, 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 I'm a journalist I'm liable to my own way of interpreting things. Yes. After 10 years of the UPA, India's foreign policy needs an overhaul, a change. How many of you agree with the subject? Raise your hands. And how many of you disagree? How many of you are happy with the way the UPA's foreign policy has gone? There's your answer. None of you? There's your answer. There's your answer. Well, uh, no, no, your answer. well, well I would like to ask the audience. I would like to ask Why? the audience one sec, one sec. That, 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 if at all, you think that there is something wrong with the way we've conducted a foreign policy. I respect your judgment. But then tell me, what is the better way of doing it? I can tell you. What is the here. better I'll way of doing it? In the sense that over the I'll past 10 years, you, well, in the sense you, yeah. Mr. Mr. Hardeep Puri, they may, 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 may be or may not be happy with us, but the fact is that they're definitely you not satisfied with the way you did it. They may go to Aam Aadmi Party. They may go to Aam Aadmi Party if they're not happy well, with you. Well, if they, if yeah, they go, that's my if bigger worry. Yeah. If they go to Aam Aadmi Party, yeah. you will lose and the then, government. Then you will, then if you they go to Aam Aadmi Party, you will lose then, the then, government. Then you lost will, the government in Delhi. Then they will be doing You lost the government in Delhi. Not us. And when they do dharna outside South Block, you are in trouble. Wonderful, wonderful. BJP on record said they will go to Aam Aadmi Party. I have, I have at this, at this, this stage this of the debate. The no, no, one sec, one sec, one sec. I, I, I yeah, take that. This, <laughs> this is the first public acknowledgement. Oh, Please come clap. On, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> now, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do at this stage of the debate is ask four questions to our four panelists. Okay, uh, and and what happens in this kind of a debate is that if unless we hold them to account, we will not get a firm answer. I have four questions. Your vote matters. The vote of every person watching this debate matters. Millions are watching this program, not just in India, but in 46 countries where this program is being beamed right now. I have four questions I will ask four panelists, and then you can interject. My first question is to the BJP. Sir, be clear with me. Yes or no? Is the BJP in favor of limited strikes? on terror installations in Pakistan in the eventuality of a Pakistan-sponsored terror attack. You have 30 seconds or one minute to reply, then we'll rebut. Go ahead. In my Mr. personal Puri, take capacity, a position. yes. No, there is no personal capacity on this no, program. On, on, on there, you cannot answer a question on limited strikes out of context. You cannot, you, you, limited strike is a very serious business. Because, and you, without knowing what the context is, no political party will take a position on this. After all, this is your sovereign territory and someone else uh, uh, attacks you in terms of terrorism. Then, if you ask me, if I were an advisor, I would tell the government in power if it was a terrorist attack of the kind that took place in Bombay, I would say, 
please consider that as an option. Put it on the table. Beyond that, there's I'm no not willing to I go. repeat, there's no personal position on the program. Well, then, as I said, nobody can answer that may question I, in, 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 a, in a hypothetical sense. I, I only ask this. I ask this not in the context of my belief in the subject, but in the context of the muscularity that the BJP's the foreign policy you, you know, Charles, Charles, Charles Atlas type of language of a gym, of a physical gym. Uh, you know, uh, muscularity and robust, etc. are okay for literature students. Really? But here, when you are discussing serious national security, you cannot answer yeah, a hypothetical so situation. I, I, I thought, you know, you know so somebody does a terrorist I, I, I thought, Well, my position is, if somebody attacks I, 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 I thought, country, I, thought, I will give him a befitting response. Well, I thought, it I will have to give him a befitting I, I, response. I, 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 I but thought, I cannot do it Mr. on Hanipuri, behalf of I, I thought Mr. Mr. Narendra Modi, Mr. Yes. Narendra Modi had that muscularity when he spoke about Pakistan. You know what Mr. He said Narendra about Modi had that he kind said of pa India and Pakistan must work together to uh, attack that common enemy, which he is poverty. Said, he said See, that is what Mr. He Modi said. said the UPA said. government. And, and this is what he, Mr. He Modi said. said the said. UPA government. And he said the UPA government has been absolutely lax in securing India's borders. He said, when will the center wake up? He also said we remain weak when we remain when we needed to be strong. These are I can correct statements. Well, in all of those statements were not exactly lacking muscularity. Yes, but but Mr. he did not talk I about carrying a limited strike. He did not talk, Mr. talk about limited strike. A question. I have a specific question to Mr. Puri. Yes, Mr. Puri, I do hope that you respect Mr. Lal Krishna Advani in the same manner that you respect Mr. Atal Bihari ah. Vajpayee. Yeah. If you would recall that Mr. Lal Krishna Advani, before he came to government in 1998 used to talk about hot pursuit. Yes. Right. His every other statement used to be of hot pursuit. That's right. right. When he became the Home Minister in 1998, and then again in 1999, why did you do a U-turn on hot pursuit? Forget limited strikes. You even gave up the position of pursuing terrorists into Pakistani territory, and here you are saying that it is my personal opinion that there should be limited strikes. No. So your party, oh. as Mr. No, Beg no, was no, pointing no, out, no, no, no. tries to said, run with the hare and hunt with the hound. Not you at have all. one position you, in power and another to, position are you in going opposition. To, are you going to not only Mr. that, Mr. <coughs> are you going to disown Mr. Advani? Uh, Mr. Advani was yes, Deputy yes. Prime Minister, Deputy Prime, the Home Minister of the country for many years, you judge him by what he said did and what he said as Home Minister, not where, what he said I'm when he was in opposition. I'm asking a specific question. Hot pursuit. Hot pursuit was one of the favorite muscular mantras of the hawkish foreign policy of the BJP in the 90s. In the why 90s, did you abandon it when you came to government? We are in 2000. We are at, why, we, why did you abandon we, it when you came had, to government? We've had 10 years of, of complete forget, weakness forget in foreign policy from the Congress. Forget our 10 years. I'll answer our 10 years. And, you and, said, you and said limited issue, strikes in your personal opinion. Well, limited strikes. Okay. No. So you even abandoned hot pursuit. What you got well, in those last 10 years was that there was global recognition of the fact. They're raising the threshold. They're, they're, they're raising the they're, threshold. They kill your, they kill your the officers in the embassy that in Pakistan, Kabul. The they behead your soldiers. You they attack and Mumbai. That the threshold is going up. Okay, and what is the success of our democracy? What we have, that, that, that what, we have got exposed the true colors of Pakistan. My next question is to Pawan Varma. Pawan Varma, in your opening remarks in the course of the debate, you said that the worst incident in India's foreign policy that you can remember is that of Kargil. It was on my later comments. Yes. I, 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 I wonder whether you have short-term memory loss. <laughs> uh, I did not say Mr. Mr. Pawan Varma, January, January 2013, after the beheading of, of our soldiers at the border, our Prime Minister said after this dastardly act, there cannot be business as usual with Pakistan. Despite that, he went ahead, he rolled out the red carpet, he extended a lavish biryani lunch to the Pakistani Prime Minister in March, a month after the Hyderabad blast where the needle of suspicion was pointed and continues to be pointed at Pakistan. I wonder, Mr. Pawan Varma, whether it is only because you are desperate to be on the Congress Party's right side today. And I wonder why. I, 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 wonder, I, wonder, I wonder why that you have, you have had short-term memory loss on any incident following Kargil. You want to First revise of all, your position. Now that you've asked me the question, please give me 30 seconds to answer. Yes, sir. I said Kargil is one of the more nightmarish incidents of India's foreign policy because it brought together... You said not the most. The most. Because it brought together various elements of things that should not happen. Just before it happened, the Prime Minister of India goes on a friendship yatra in a bus to Pakistan. Yes. Meanwhile, our intelligence is so lax that we do not detect 
intruders into our territory which have been going on for months. After they come in and our soldiers begin to die, our response should have been to cross, in my view, the line of actual control and seal the border from the other side in order to prevent supplies no, to these intruders. No, 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 no. We didn't I, I do it. We went about to the chancelleries of the counter, world counter, 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 asking was for... A military just, a, just a minute. Just, Bombay was a sir, terrorist attack. Come on. Just, and just, and you, you're so finish. selective in your... Let me finish. So are we trying to say that if you said Kargil is bad, why didn't you say that the beheading was worst? Of course both were bad. What kind of a debate are we having? But you're, you're by, bad. All I said was Kargil in many ways symbolize the many things that are wrong with our foreign policy. And what, and what, what about repeat it. What, what, what about the Sharmal Sheikh joint statement where he mentioned Baluchistan? Certainly, eight months, I, eight, I, mo eight months, I mind, eight months. Yes. Eight months after 26-11. Indeed. Sharmal Sheikh was eight months after 26 -11. You don't remember that? I do remember, sir. You, in you, fact, I raised Sharmal Sheikh in my when, when, statement. When Manmohan Singh equated India with Pakistan as a victim of terrorism in Havana two months after sir, the July train the, bombing. Both these are the facts that July I mentioned bombing, in my you remember that? statement. No, no, Havana so busy, and Sharmal Sheikh. He's so busy Sheik. targeting the BJP. He wants to so exonerate I, the Congress with my, which he my, wants an I alliance now. Manish I mean, his own party is doing Bay, badly in Bihar. Mr. So he now wants to Manish take him over and take him over My question. I think Mr. Puri has not grown out of school or college debates. So he's going Going on talking, which is something which is irrelevant. We will forgive him because he will have much to learn. The point is this, that we are raising serious issues of foreign policy. I raised Sharmal Sheikh and I raised Havana because I believe these were concessions which were acts of appeasement which were not necessary. And a mature country which has aspirations to be a superpower should take such actions in the context of a long term policy framework, not I, ad hoc, I, I, not reactive. My, my, my next question is to the National Conference. Sir, in August 2013, after our soldiers were brutally treated by Pakistani troops, I don't even want to describe what happened. The Pakistani embassy, Pakistan Assembly passed an anti-India resolution. Sir, do you believe that your party leader, Farooq Abdullah, committed a historic blunder, if I may use the cliche, by initially opposing and not supporting, by initially opposing an anti-Pakistan resolution, how can a party and a leader who says his heart is always with India, that he supports the best interests of this country, oppose bringing an anti-Pakistan resolution in the Indian parliament, sir? Do you believe that was a historic plan? Arnab, that's a problem. That's a problem, to be honest, with you and with my audience, young audience. We don't need certificates of nationalism from anybody. Was that a historic blunder? No, no, just hang on. Uh, hang on for a minute. That's a problem. That's a problem with BJP and that's a problem no, with no, UP. Just question. hang on, hang on. BJP. hang on. Hang on, hang on. This has come from BJP. This has come from BJP. <laughs> I'm Sir, very this is sure about it. Sure that Mr. Fake is not privy to some, you know, internal. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he doesn't yeah. want to reveal. Well, like, like he's joining from this party. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is one second, Mr. No, Mr. Mr. Bake. Mr. Bake, I want to say one thing. I, 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 I want, I, I want to say one thing. You see, you see, allies are being discussed. We'll get the numbers on our own. A moment back, if I ask, if I ask a silly question to the BJP. He can say that question has come from the Congress. If I ask you a question, you can say it's come from the... It's part of the no, risk no, of my no. trade. Answer the question, yeah, sir. I'll answer. Answer that. the question. Why did Farooq Abdullah initially oppose the anti-Pakistan resolution which was being brought in August 2013 on the floor of the Indian Parliament, sir? Two things, two things. Now hear me out. Two things. One, which I don't want to repeat, which I have said earlier on. And so far as National Conference is concerned, history bears testimony to the fact that it is national conference which has acted as a bridge between state of Jammu and Kashmir and rest of the Why country. Why did Farooq Abdullah oppose the, the fact, resolution initially? Just hang on. Just hang on for a minute. As I said, <coughs> we, people living in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, are affected and affected badly whenever we have hostility between the two countries. We were, we were the economic, economic, hub before answer. 47 and got disconnected from rest of the world because of the hostility between the two countries so when he said that he had he had he had uh, uh, what? he had people what? of Jammu and Kashmir haunting uh, and on later his what did he do which way did you vote no no so far no, as which way did you vote uh, so far as national interest is concerned no, we which are way always did you with vote, the national sir? interest when i uh, talked about regional <laughs> so interest which way did you vote eventually at that time 
we didn't behave as TMC behaved and did not allow us to go ahead with that uh, golden opportunity of signing water agreement with Bangladesh. We didn't do what Tamil, both parties, Dravidian parties did and did not allow Prime Minister to go to Sri Lanka because they thought the sentiment, regional sentiment was supreme to national sentiment. We never did that, we will never do that. But having said that, You're as I said earlier, question. national interest is supreme, but our own people's sentiment, their uh, emotion, sentiment, aspirations have to be taken into consideration and has to be respected. Well, sir, you didn't answer my question. I did. You didn't, sir. I did, sir. He's quite happy sir, sir you didn't answer your question. I did, question. sir. He's quite happy that he We can go on. My next question, uh, my next question, and I hope in this part of the debate, Mr. Manish Tiwari will be specific with me. Mr. Manish Tiwari, I have given off several examples here today, but my moot point to you is this. I will not use the word muscularity, but I'll certainly say there doesn't seem to be any consistency. And I'll give you four examples. Two months after the July train bombings in Mumbai, Manmohan Singh equates Pakistan with India as a victim of terrorism. But what the case I found most disturbing was that at the SARC summit in Maldives, which happened in November 2011, four months, just four months after the serial blasts in Mumbai, four months after the serial blasts in Mumbai, our Prime Minister says, Yusuf Raza Gilani, who basically has had a history of doing nothing vis-a-vis -vis India Pakistan relations, is a man of peace who will rewrite the history of our relationship. Do you believe that your government by, and your Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, by saying these things, betrayed the people of India and the well, sentiments of the people of India vis a vis Pakistan sponsored terror, Mr. Well, I think uh, this canard that Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh try to equate India and Pakistan on the question of terror goes, it is a complete insinuation which I rejected with the contempt it deserves. What the uh, Prime you know Minister, what, what the Havana. Prime Minister said, what the Prime Minister said was that if you sow the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. And because Pakistan became the nursery for terrorism, because Pakistan used terrorists as an instrument of state policy, you have a situation today in Pakistan whereby it has become a victim of terrorism itself. And let me give no, you some what, statistics. What, 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 let, let me the, give you statistics. No, no, allow I, me. I, I, one, allow me. Counter allow, allow me. No, no, Mr. Allow, Mr. Minister, at allow this stage, me, allow, allow me a counter. Me to, my only Mr. question Goswami, to you is, you te tell me one Mr. thing. Mr. Goswami, tell me and allow, me to, tell allow, me, to, one thing. allow me to substantiate the, that. Then you must allow me to give you a counter after that. In 2005, the number of people who died to all forms of terror in India was 3,259. And in so Pakistan, it was 648. Those, I in Pakistan, it was 648. Together. In 2013, Again, in India, it was 885. And Pakistan, it was 5,379. So you're the making a case for I'm Pakistan or a case for India? The short point I'm trying to make is what the Prime Minister said. Are you making a case for Pakistan? Said, case for Pakistan? I'm, I'm not making a case for uh, Pakistan. You are. What I'm trying to tell you is what the Prime Minister said. Where Pakistan was that when you sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. Pakistan sowed the seeds of terror and it is now reaping it in the manner in which its society has been radicalized and, it, and there are bombings every day. Why? And insofar, and insofar as I, Mr. I, Yusuf Raza Gilani is concerned, yes. look, over the past 64 years or ever since independence, every Indian prime minister has made a, a consistent and a constant effort to see that we, we should resolve without conceding ground are uh, problems with Pakistan. And if Dr. Manmohan Singh walked that extra mile, wanted to trust Pakistan, you know, told Mr. Oh, Yusuf Raza Gilani that, all right, you know, please act on Mumbai. Please act on sir, Mr. Dawood. Sir, Dauby my Bain. counter to you is, sir, my counter, issues, my counter, my counter. Have peace. My what counter, so wrong with do that? you have counters from this yes. side? I have, I have just one counter to you, Mr. Tiwari. And the fact of the matter is this, that your government has not even backed your honest diplomats. And there are some here in the audience today who have spoken their heart out and spoken the truth. The one example I can tell you is when G.K. Pillai, our Home Secretary in 2010, made a reference to Headley's confession that implicated the ISI, that implicated the ISI in 2611. Their Foreign Minister, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, I think was, his, was the Foreign Minister then, he says that he equated Pillai's comments with Hafiz Saeed. And S.M. Krishna, our Foreign Minister, who has had the unique distinction of 
I think uh, reading out uh, Portuguese. Portuguese, which Mr. Hardi Puri uh, gave to him, uh, yeah, whatever. Which Mr. Puri handed he, over to him instead of instead of instead of, <laughs> instead, of <laughs> instead of saying, allow me to come. Instead, our foreign minister, instead of saying, Mr. Mr. Tiwari, that our that our uh, the Home Secretary has said the right thing. He's implicated the ISI. Our foreign minister criticized. Our foreign minister criticized his own honest Home Secretary. To be on the Mr. side of the Goswami, Pakistan Mr. foreign Mr. minister, Goswami, I don't do think there's anything more unfortunate. Than that. I don't think you, you know, you I, do. I can, but I, let me jog your I, memory. Well, let's, the Home let's Minister jog our of memories. India, the Home Minister of India at that point yes. in time, Mr. P. Chitambaram, not only strongly supported the Home Secretary, but also endorsed what uh, what the Home Secretary had said. And insofar as the Foreign Minister is concerned. The foreign minister Sir. may have made a statement which you are referring to, but the position of the government of India was consistent that insofar as Mumbai is concerned or the outrages in Mumbai is concerned, there is absolutely no question of conceding any ground to Pakistan. Well, Mr. 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 Tiwari, I do not have selective amnesia, why but I can, I can, I can to, certainly why tell have you. you continue okay, to uh, engage the Pakistanis, including at summit level? You are all the time, when they come to you, did you even once say, till we get justice insofar as the perpetrators of the crime in Mumbai are concerned. Have you got any justice? What have you got from I the Americans in terms of uh, Hadley Chase or any of the other people who have been conniving along with the ISI? Mr. Tiwari, I think you owe the country a simple explanation on what and how the Americans have helped you out on this whole terror issue vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan. The Americans want to engage Pakistan and you say even the Americans are. We are not the Americans. Let's be very clear. We have a security threat which is live coming from Pakistan. If the Pakistanis are not reigning in the terror machine, there's no point you giving us statistics of more people dying from terrorist violence inside Pakistan than they're dying in India. Those guys are dying in Pakistan because the terror machine, that hydra-headed monster which they have created, is devouring its own creator. Whereas we are suffering loss of life and property because of Pakistan-based terrorists. So where is the equation? Well, I think May Mr. I Hardeep Puri, Mr. Hardeep Puri, first of all, uh, I don't think I need a lecture from you insofar as terrorism is concerned, because if there is some, somebody on this panel who's experienced terrorism personally, it is me. So therefore, to rebut your point as to why the, yes, why, 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 why the Prime Minister of India continued to engage with Pakistan, notwithstanding the recalcitrant behavior, is because, unfortunately, you cannot change your neighbors. And the reality is that you have to pursue a policy no, no, whereby no. you engage, you no, contain, no. but at the same time, you do not concede. Okay. So the difference is that in the last 10 years of the UPA government, we've never conceded to Pakistan. But what have we you done? We have engaged with but them. But what have you done? What, what, why have you shown? Why have you shown? Why have you shown? Why have you shown? Because to, why what have you shown? after 2008, uh, Arnab, was that for the first time, entities based in Pakistan were put on the terrorist list. Uh, what you got well, in those last uh, 10 years was that there was global recognition of the fact. They're, 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 they're raising the threshold. They're raising the threshold. They kill your officers in the embassy in Kabul. They behead your soldiers. They attack Mumbai. The threshold is going up. Okay, what is the success of our diplomacy? What we have got exposed the true colors of Pakistan. What we have got, what's it? What we have got is that Rahman Malik, who was interior minister, said that the 2611 case would be a fast track. What we have got is that Salman Bashir, who is the present Pakistani envoy to India, has said the same thing all over again. What have we got, Mr. Minister? <coughs> when, a counter when, question when, coming when, your uh, way. Uh, counter Mr. Question. Goswami, allow me to yes, answer that. Because what yes. you've got is that by constantly and continuous pressure that you've applied on Pakistan, Today, Pakistan is almost a pariah state in the world insofar as terror is concerned. So, therefore, what, what also you've so, got, uh, what also you've got is a recognition that every, every, every time you, the, but all the other, the all the other oh, democratic this is a, this is a the world are now bound to Pakistan. Every time the Prime Minister wants to talk to Pakistan, it becomes a pariah state. Pawan Varma, question to the minister. Just one question I want to say, if we should let temper school a little. If you feel that engagement is good, Nobody can deny your statement. The question is, what does that engagement yield? You had Mumbai riot, attack on Mumbai. You took a stand and you needed to engage, but with um, lots of other leverages behind you. You were allowed incursions to take place. They are happening at a much greater pace in Jammu Kashmir even now. Our soldiers are being beheaded. You do not know who you are talking to in Pakistan, apart from anything else. 
So you can't just say engagement at any cost Mr. is good. Barba, may I ask you? I ask you this question. Very respectfully, okay, now in the last 64 you. years, has anybody in the Indian state or the Indian establishment been sure that the person that they're engaging with in Pakistan will be able to deliver? The question is that Pakistan has differentiated centers of power. And therefore, because the logic therefore, of geography, sir, we talk. the lo logic, of, we no, no, talk. logic of geography does not change. You need to engage with all the interlocutors sir, I, in I, Pakistan I, I and keep the, the pressure on. Sir, just see, a question. See, counter see. question. No, no, no. But no I'll, I'll ask you a counter, counter question. question. I'll ask you a I'll counter, counter question. question. I'm sorry. Mr. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead. My question is, the engagement is fine, but we had an attack which was a very humiliating one. And every time we have subsequently engaged, it has provided Pakistan an alibi to, in some manner, exactly. absolve itself of that culpability. And then then the we are, in a sense, legitimizing or edifying that particular culpability. My worry is, I'm, by the way, I nobody you. doubts engagement. Sam Adam or Dandabed, I said to you from the beginning, please, we have got an old doctrine, engage, but don't become defenseless in other areas or don't believe. And I say this with humility to you. Don't believe engagement per se will yield results. I'll tell you what will yield results. What will yield results is that if we have a multi-partisan consensus in this country on how do we need to engage with Pakistan, how do we need to engage with China, and how do we need to engage with the rest of the world. The problem is that when a government tries to engage, and just for the sake of scoring political brownie points, you know, you have sniping taking place, you know, and from a government which had exactly pursued the same policy, that is what undermines us. So therefore, so therefore, so therefore, so therefore, one second, uh, Mr. Kuri, you know, the other way of doing it is that if you want a national consensus, is that you put up a wall from Kashmir all the way down to Kathiawar and say that no, we no, just no, forget no, about no, Pakistan. You know, so therefore, the difficulty is that there's no constructive solution. Can you allow me to agree with you? Mr. Tiwari, I welcome this formulation that we require a national consensus on national security and sensitive foreign policy issues. But I wish this kind of an offer was coming at the start of your 10 years rather than at the fag end of your 10 years. Number two, can I just complete this? Even now, even now, the party which is in power has a higher obligation in order to consult the other stakeholders in the political system and in, in the country as such. Please tell me on how many foreign and security policy issues, ranging from China, uh, uh, Pakistan, the United States, have you actually made the effort to reach out to the opposition parties, including my friend Pavan Varma's party, and ask them for their inputs? I know he's close to you, but still, you should show them the courtesy of consulting them, in, to get inputs from them on how to formulate policy. Bangladesh is a case in point. No. Sri Lanka is a case in point. Pakistan is a case in point. All I'm asking is, even now, in the remaining three, four months, I know once the code oh, of okay. conduct comes in, Fine. maybe uh, okay. foreign policy formulation will... Uh, uh, if the BJP and Congress let me, let me, let me form a national con let, let me come back on that. Why the security Puri, of this okay. country Mr. Puri, is short rebut, Mr. Puri, since, you know, since you were traveling around the world and serving the country in important yeah. capitals, yeah. may I just jog your memory? You talked about the United States of America. Who started the next steps in strategic partnership? It was the NDA government. Correct. It is the UPA government which came and continued with that policy. Whether it was a defense framework agreement, whether it was the Indo-US civil nuclear engagement, not which, no, which broke, which broke the apartheid, the nuclear apartheid, which had been imposed in India since 1974. But you failed to implement it. But you failed to implement the act. Please do not interrupt. You signed an agreement. You that you are weak. Please do not. No, I'm on your side. I agree with you. No, but but your point was: were we consulted? Of course, you were consulted. But you choose to oppose for the sake of opposition. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, come on, Lucas. Look them in the eye and tell them the truth. On the Indo-US nuclear agreement, you were consulted. On the civilian nuclear agreement, it was passed. And you, it was a US great achievement, agreement. but when all it came, the parties, all the opposition parties were all But when it came to implementing that, you or, have or not allowed a single China dollar or on Pakistan. Uh, Every time there has been a consultation with the opposition leaders. This, this so, whole question, there is no we have five, five minutes on the debate. I think, I, one second, we have five bill. minutes on the debate. I want to ask the National Congress representative. I think you're being careful today because you don't know which side you'll be on after the general election. 
No, you don't know. We know it for certain. You don't know. <laughs> and he is always in a habit of drawing conclusions. So you are you have sat in the judgment. May, 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 Mr. Baig, my question to you is: yes, Farooq Abdullah was quoted as having said on the 14th of August 2013, and I quote: "We have a problem with Pakistan, and you cannot settle that problem with war. So how do you settle it? You talk. You have to find conditions to talk. Why do you want to close?" the doors for talks. I asked the media, why does it want to close the doors of talking? My question, Mr. Baig, to you is this. Please explain to me, what explains Farooq Abdullah's belief that talks are the only way forward? Haven't we seen enough Pakistani attacks on Indian soil, despite all these assurances of Musharraf and the man of peace, Mr. Gilani, etc., that Pakistan allows its soil to be used for terror attacks on India? Why does your leader have such a deep abiding faith in Pakistan, despite everything that they did. We have to do that, Mr. Arnab, at any cost. No, but without as any I action. Said, please, as I said earlier on, we have had three wars. In one of the wars, Bangladesh got created. But in spite of that, and many mini wars, not only major wars, many mini wars, and even when Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee was at the helm, I'm glad you said we that. saw eyeball to eyeball contact, and we kept how many millions of soldiers on uh, uh, on so war then, footing. So then, say no, it today, on Mr. war Bain. footing. But what I mean is, finally, we have to come to the table. Finally, we have to talk. Finally, we have to fix issues. And we, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, then why? Then why? Just because you are in power and you hold a government with the Congress Party. You put national interest per first or your politics first or being in power first. Why did you not stop the Prime Minister and tell him? Why did Farooq Abdullah not tell the Prime Minister, Sir, you are talking rubbish when you say it cannot be business as usual with Pakistan after the beheadings carried out by the Pakistani army. Why didn't you say that then, sir? Please tell me. Why did you not stop Mr. Yeah, yeah, A.K. Anthony? Yeah, yeah. Why did you not stop Mr. A.K. Anthony when from he said... Do, when he said, what? Well, why didn't what? you tell them that what you are saying doesn't make sense? We disagree with you. On this point itself, we will not have a government with you. Why did you continue to remain in power in an alliance in Srinagar, sir? My, my, my question when, to you, sir, you understand what I'm saying. We have to be firm, but we have to be flexible. Sir, what is that? Same. We have to be firm, one we question. have to be flexible, so and at the end of the day, okay. we have to talk and we have to fix issues okay. only counter. through a one counter, dialogue. See, one counter, and uh, after that, uh, I want to tell the audience, we are going to take this to the vote finally, and I will give 30 seconds to each side to wrap up and tell all our audience today <clears> that if they were to come to power or have a stake in the next government in New Delhi, what is the one thing in terms of foreign policy they would do for the, for the next government? Yes, you have a last, there's a last interjection, no, please. Firm and flexible is a, so, is a very dangerous phenomenon if you don't do it properly. I ask you this question. Every time we have a summit with Pakistan, the Hurriyat leadership is allowed to meet with Pakistani leaders when they refuse to meet the democratically elected That's chief right. minister of JNK or the prime minister of India. Why do we allow? Why do we allow? Oh, come on. Uh, do we have an elected government? We have to believe in government. No, we have an elected, elected government. government. But they don't meet our no, own. We have, have an elected, elected government in the state we, and we have an elected government in Delhi. Who is the Huriyat? We have to have faith. Who has elected and the Huriyat? And when governments allow people to Who talk, there is no the problem. Who has elected the no, Huriyat? No, no, I am not telling you What is you their that. legitimate speech? No, no, no. Who are they? No, no, no. I am not telling How you How many that. votes have they got? No, no. Then why are you allowing you them to talk to the government questions, of Pakistan? You go on asking questions, you don't uh, allow me to uh, respond. Please, in J&K, let's not wish it away. We have a problem at hand. There yes. are okay. people, there are people, there are alienated sections of the okay. society. And there is no harm as a democratic country. We believe in talks. We must talk okay. to them and get them in okay. the mainstream. Okay, now at this stage, have you enjoyed the debate so far? And, and can we have a round of applause for our fantastic panelists, please? It's been brilliant so far. And I must say this, that it is so illuminating for me as, a, as an anchor as well, who is constantly accused of being partisan by every politician I met. <laughs> One day, I have a deep and abiding belief that I will be paid a compliment by all these four gentlemen. Definitely. Uh, well, well I, but I would want now, to say this. I would want, I would want to say this. Let's have this issue put to the vote. Uh, or should we act? Okay, let's have the issue put to the vote. 30 seconds each. And okay, 30 seconds each. I will give 30 seconds each for all the four panelists. Starting from the left, Manish Tiwari, if you were in power, my question to you is, tell me one thing you'll give to the people of this country and for our first-time voters in this election. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tiwari, well, in terms uh, of foreign the policy. the fact is, uh, Mr. Goswami, that we are in power. And uh, 
with God's grace and people's uh, support, I do hope that in May 2014, we would get a chance to continue serving the people of India. But be that as it may, since we are talking of a foreign policy debate, and I began by saying that the two important objectives is strategic autonomy and consolidation or space for consolidation. What the UPA has done over the past 10 years is like a thoughtful grandmaster. It has nuanced India's foreign policy and maximized and optimized our advantage. Foreign policy is not a T20 match where you score you know, okay. debating power points or brownie points. And the one thing that the UPA would do if it comes back, we will deepen our economic engagement with all our interlocutors to see that foreign direct investment in this country increases. Skill development takes place. The industrial corridors that we have put in place but we are through, uh, you know, it come, come to complete. fruition. And ultimately, our foreign policy okay. is able to deliver for our young people more skill, more jobs, and better education. Okay, Man that is what uh, Man the objective of UPA3 Ma is going Manish to Manish Tiwari, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manish. Thank you, and thank you for participating in the debate, Mr. Big. Your 30 seconds now. Uh, th my 30 seconds would be, uh, so far as foreign policy, we are here talking about foreign policies. Foreign policy, we should never overreact or underreact. We have to give major response. I'm, I think we must learn from our experiences. We must not go, uh, go hysterical about things. We have to be very careful. We are the largest democ uh, democracy in the world. And our response to anything, so far as our uh, relationship with the rest of the world, should be very ma majored and very calculated. Mr. Baig, thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Pawan Varma. If we have any say in the making of foreign policy, we would do what I believe both the BJP and the Congress have so far failed successfully to do, which is to substitute this ad hoc and reactive foreign policy with a long-term foreign policy strategic doctrine, which with anticipation, clarity and planning serves long-term goals rather than merely reacting to events as they happen. We need to end this ad hocism because India is in the most troubled and dangerous neighborhood of the world. Right. And we need, therefore, this kind of framework, which we have not yet devised, as a major power in the world. Mr. Bhavan pa Varma, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hardeep Puri, please, of the BJP. Thank you, Arnab. Um, in the last 10 years, foreign policy has been characterized by reticence, hesitation, and sometimes by strategic confusion. If the BJP comes to power, either by itself or in, uh, in, along with its allies, it we will provide more them. focused attention to national security and foreign policy. But most important, it will provide the enabling environment for the economy to begin okay. to grow again at 9%, which is what we gave the economy in 2004 to the uh, uh, UPA, yes. so that the 9% growth will generate jobs for our young people, who in turn will become, be become uh, they will use their en Very entrepreneurial similar. skills and talents for an India which will find its rightful place in the glow in the committee of nations. Except, the the except, the statements. Except, except for the fact that it was 5.9 percent in 2004 and not 9 percent. Okay. So therefore, but, I think uh, the, that's the, a factual correction. The UPA, which has argued so well today, wants to have the last word. Can I put this to audience uh, to vote on the subject? If after 10 years of the UPA. Do you feel foreign policy needs an overhaul? How many of you feel it needs an overhaul? It, okay. How many of you feel it? How many of you are on Mr. Manish Tiwari's side today? Well, there are a few. Mr. Manish Tiwari, you have won over quite a few here today. To your credit, I thank you very much for taking part in these debates. Very well argued. It has been great to listen to all of you. Foreign policy, of course, is a key area. And in our continuing national election debates, what do you think of the national election debate? What is the subject that you would like to see debated? Here are some options on your screen right now. Tell us which of these you think I should be picking up next. I'll see you soon on the next national election debate. Good night and good night. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.